So, hello everybody. I had a request from several folks to create a video of how to make this toilet paper tube microphone. So I've got all my materials together here. I'll show you what, what uh, I put together. Um, I have the roll of parchment paper, which is uh, uh, the, the basically the material that uh, is going to be the diaphragm of the microphone. I have here a box that contains a, the roll of wire, and I've provided each of you with a spool of the same wire. Uh, so that's what we're going to use for the coil. And here in this box, I have a whole pile of magnets. And I sent each of you one of these very powerful magnets. So I'll put that here for working on later. Um, I have various uh, uh, tools and materials, a razor blade, some glue, a match, some tweezers, pencil, and here is uh, a piece of, of cardboard. It's light cardboard. This light cardboard is uh, just part of a, a thin packing box, and this will be used to create the forms that will hold the, the, the magnet in place in the middle of the tube, and I'll, I'll demonstrate how to do that. And then down here, I have a sheet of cardstock. This is not uh, heavy cardstock. This is the kind of uh, stuff that would be like cover stock on a, uh, on a report or, you know, uh, even a greeting card kind of thing. Kind of thin, but not flimsy. And let's see. Oh, and then over here, some, some, some tape. I only need like one piece of that. Um, and then here I have a uh, discarded set of, of earbuds. Uh, this discarded set of earbuds is here uh, mostly because I need the connector. And I've already cut off the earbud bits, so they're going to go out of the way. And what I'm left with is the plug end and the wires that will connect to our microphone. The first step is to have the toilet paper roll at the ready, get some perspective on how big it is uh, for your own purposes, because a, a lot of things are going to be attached to this. Um, so the first thing we need to do is do that magnet on a stick thing. Uh, the stick, I've chosen a piece of standard bamboo uh, uh, chopstick. Uh, not a uh, plastic one, though that probably will work, and I'm going to cut that off uh, with a little saw I've got here. So I'll move these pieces of paper out of the way, and this out of the way. I'll move this little saw into place. You can use any kind of a, a hand saw or something to do this. I just happen to have uh, one of these that I was using for cutting harpsichord jacks last year to help uh, repair my own harpsichord at home. And it's just a little tiny version of a table saw. Uh, so I'm going to measure this this way. I want the magnet to go up almost almost to the diaphragm that's going to be on the top of this. But I don't want it to go past it. Uh, but I want it to be a little bit longer so that I can have some, some room to manipulate it and get it into place. And we'll worry about uh, anything to do with that. Uh, fitting later, but for right now, we're just going to get approximate measure. So I'm going to make this uh, just about maybe maybe a half inch longer than the uh, toilet paper tube. And so I'm going to put it over here where my blade is. I don't know if you can see it happening, but I'm going to turn this on. <laughs> And there we have it. I've now created a stick of the correct length to go into the toilet paper tube with a little coming out the back so I can manipulate it when it's in place. So, all right, so I now have that material at the ready and I can uh, get rid of the other piece, which I don't need anymore. So I'll put that over here in my discard pile. Okay, so I've got my wire. I've got the paper and the cardboard. And I've got the parchment paper. The other thing that I need to do is I need to wind my coil around something. So I, I'm cut a piece, I cut a piece of this cardstock before. And I'm going to take this cardstock and I'm going to wrap it around a AAA battery. Just about right size. The, 
the uh, coil will go on this and the magnet will go on that. And that's what I need my little piece of, of tape for. So I'm going to take a little piece of this. Oh, that's really nice. That's Dennis at his best coordination. So I'll <laughs> cut a piece of this off first. There we go. Then I'll wrap this little piece of um, paper of cardstock around there and I'll put the the tape in place. I now have the tape at the ready and I can uh, begin to wind my coil around that. I have a razor blade here for any uh, single edge razor blade that I use for things that I didn't do quite right. And since I'm doing this as a demonstration in real real life, I made that tape <laughs> go a little bit too fast, far past the the edge of the <laughs> the edge of that paper. So I'm just gonna trim that off again so it's not in the way. Alright. See I get my prizes for accuracy this way. I think I have it all off. Good. Everything is off of this and now comes time to wind this wire. Winding the wire is a little tricky, only in that you have to make sure it doesn't slide off the end. So I'm going to begin by making sure I have enough wire, to, which is very hard to see, but enough wire to come out the bottom of the microphone. So uh, I'm going to just make lots of extra to hang over there. And then I'm going to start just turning this wire around the coil. I'm going to make about maybe 100, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, The more 20, 20. turns you put on here, the more uh, electrical current is generated. I'm sorry, I had that out of the image of the camera. So uh, I got just about 100 turns on this now. And so I will cut this end off also quite long. And I'll put a little piece of this tape on it at the top so that the wires don't unwind because that would be no fun at all. So I'm just put a little piece of tape on that hold those in place. So it's still around that triple A battery to help keep the form in shape. So it's still around the battery. Okay. I'm going to leave it there because I'm temporarily done with this because I've got to make I've got to make my magnet on the stick now. Uh, so here's the magnet. I'm going to use some some uh, crazy glue kind of stuff for this. Uh, I got a fresh tube of that, and I'm going to put some on the top of the stick and all over my hand, of course, wouldn't you know? Uh, and then the magnet on top of that. Good job. See, and we have to let that sit there. And the problem I'm having right now is I got it all over me. So, <laughs> so uh, get <laughs> getting the magnet to stay in place. It's gonna be tricky because the magnet now wants to stick to me. Okay, that's about the best I got. Well, it's still small enough to go through. It's small, still small enough to go through the hole of the coil in my AA battery, so we're, <laughs> we're okay with that. Uh, so I'll let that uh, sit there, and my hands are now uh, completely uncoordinated. All right, now we go back to here. We're gonna need something to hold this stick, and the idea is that all we wanna do is fit it in so uh, it's held in place. We're not gonna do any fancy engineering here, we're just going to take the toilet paper roll and do a measurement. Take that and measure the toilet paper roll with a pencil, just really as simple as possible, and do a couple of circles. And do another circle. And so we've got these two circles that are approximately the, uh, the outside uh, of, the, of the toilet paper roll. Um, now you'll say, well, how are we going to fit them inside? Now I'll show you a little trick here. Uh, that we can do with this. I've cut them out ahead of time just so uh, I wouldn't take your time watching it. So here's the two circles I cut ahead of time. And you'll notice that uh, I punched a hole in the middle. That's where the stick with the magnet is going to be held. And then I've also put little uh, cuts around them so that they can fit in the tube and 
Once they fit in the tube, uh, they'll, the thing will stay in place exactly where you want it to be, uh, just from, from sheer uh, pressure along the sides. And so I'll take this thing here, and I'll, just for sake of starting, I'll put these in here so you can see what I mean by that. And you push them in to the tube. And you can see, I don't know if you can see if there's enough light to see, but they are sitting in the middle of the tube. Let's see if we can get them a little closer here. You see, they're sitting in the middle of the tube with the hole in it, and then I will put this magnet stick in them. So I'll take them back out again for now. Take this cardboard out of the way. Just push them out of the, back out again. And so what I'm going to do is stick this thing in it and this one in it. So this is, let me get in there, this is my magnet support. So it's the magnet stick support. And the, ma the magnet has no motion involved in it. The magnet is, is fixed. It's permanent. We just want it to be held in one, in one place. So I can then take the whole assembly and push the whole assembly right into here. And you see now it's sticking out the top. It's a little bit too far. We want to pull it back because we want it to be below where the diaphragm is going to end up. There it is. So we now have we now have the magnet on the stick being held in place by these little forms. And if you want to be sure about it, you can take some uh, take some uh, white glue or wood glue or whatever you happen to have around and get some on a piece of paper and and you say that cut off piece of stick we had to get some and push it on that support. Some of that glue on that support in there. And by the time we're done with the rest of the project, that glue will have dried. And our stick will be permanently in place. And see, I'm being extremely careful here, <laughs> not at all no need to be. I'm trying not to get it, by the way, on the stick itself, because we may need to adjust the stick up and down just a hair uh, after, after this is all fixed into place. But this glue will dry. It will hold the, the, uh, uh, it'll hold the form in place, and it will keep, uh, keep the stick with the magnet from moving. So our permanently placed, our permanently placed stick will stay there. So I can now set this down. I'm going to set it down here, so it's right there. I can watch it dry. I've got, I can take my uh, wire out of the way now. Okay, so I'll, I'll take this and put this out of the way. And now I am left with my, my coil that is wound around the AA battery, wound around the, the piece of paper that's wound around the AA battery. Now we cut a piece of parchment paper. Okay. And I'll set that aside because I've actually already cut the parchment paper uh, into, a, into a smaller piece. Now here's the parchment paper, just that. And what I want to do is attach this parchment paper to this coil. So I'm going to pull the AA battery back a little bit so it still holds the form. And then I'm going to take some of that handy dandy crazy glue that I spilled everywhere before and I'm going to put some on the edge of this form what I'm going to try not to do is glue the battery in it, into it so now I've got it at the edge of the form I'm going to put it right down here and I'm going to remove that battery which is holding it uh, and have the crazy glue attach itself to the bottom of my coil. I don't want to use too much, mostly because the diaphragm is the, is part of what has to move rapidly. So I'm going to take that, hold it there. 
momentarily. And what I'm going to do uh, at some point, I'm probably going to edit this video. I'm probably going to cut it so that I give this a uh, chance to dry in place and uh, become attached to that. So I'm going to I'm going to do that now. So the next thing you're going to see is uh, that uh, uh, fixed. Okay, and by I'm back and the glue is dry, the diaphragm is now attached to the coil. So the next step is finding a, a route for the wires through the tube. So we have the tube set up with the magnet in it, and obviously this coil has got to go down below to some degree. And uh, we're going to put our holes right up in this area. So gently cutting some holes in the upper part of the tube. Just for convenience, I'm going to put one on each side. And that will allow me to take these fairly long wires that I created on this coil and slide the wires in through the hole. Widen that hole a little bit so they slide in easily. Since my diaphragm is glued to that, I don't have to worry about it falling off. That wire is going to go through that hole, if I can get it there. There we go, there's one. The other wire is going to go through this other hole. So I have the wires going through the two holes. I'm going to gently pull the wires so I can bring the diaphragm the diaphragm and the coil up to near the magnet. And I want them to I want them to be placed so the wires, the wires themselves are sort of out of the way. And give myself kind of a sense of where everything's going to go. No big deal here, it's just a matter of getting everything to fit. Okay, and now we have the coil in place. Now, here's a little bit of the tricky part. We need to attach the diaphragm to the edge of this, the frame. So before we cut it to size, we'll do the gluing. The idea is to make sure the diaphragm and the coil don't actually touch the magnet. Here's where we can take some, again, take some, some glue. In this case, I'm going to use some more of this, this white glue. And I'm going to put it on the edge of, I'm going to put it on the frame. Trying to keep it off the diaphragm itself for now, because we don't really want that glue to be there until we actually put it exactly where we want it to go. Again, it's a little hard to see in, on camera, but I, I am adding that glue right to the edge, right to the edge of that. So I've got the glue run all the way around now, and now I'm going to feel where the diaphragm should be so it doesn't touch the coil. And once again, I'm going to put this down to dry. Now that it's ready to dry, I'm going to take this out of the way. I don't need the glue anymore at this point. And you can see that I have this place down so the glue can dry. I still have some things here I haven't used yet, though, and there's a reason for them being here. And as soon as this has dried, I will get back to you with the final steps. Okay, so there it is, set in there drying. So another break. Okay, I'm back and the glue is now dry. And the first thing I'm going to do is get these wires out of the way because what I really don't want to do is accidentally cut them while I'm trimming the um, when I'm trimming the diaphragm. So I'm going to get myself a piece of tape and take these wires and slide them along the side. 
and tape them down to the case. Nothing critical about that. We just want them out of the way. So we have other reasons to have them. We want to hook them up eventually. And now the time it comes to actually trim the, the diaphragm. Okay, the diaphragm is trimmed. And something you want to do when the diaphragm is trimmed is to check that it is flexible, so that it's not touching the magnet. We have a little leftover bit here I want to get rid of that's just sort of in the way, hanging off. There, all right. That's pretty much a finished diaphragm. So now we have essentially a com now we have here essentially a completed microphone. Um, except, what are we going to do about hooking it up? So I'm going to set it on its face, just so I can have it stable. And there are two ways of dealing with getting the insulation off the wires. I'll show you both ways with a, some wire from the original spool. One way of getting it getting it off, the insulation off, is simply to scrape it off with a, with a razor blade. And it's very hard to see here, so I'm going to zoom in and see what I'm about to do with this wire. Okay, I'm going to take this wire, set it here, and I'm going to run my single edge, uh, my razor blade across it to scrape off the insulation. I can now, I can now connect this wire to my plug to go into my recording equipment. Another way to do this is one that is somewhat favored by people who do this. And again, I have to make it uh, so you can see. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. There we go. Um, is to take ordinary pack of matches, <laughs> light one, and burn off the insulation. It's not really something that you'd want to do in great quantity because you don't want to get too much of that burned enamel on you, but uh, there it is, and we now have a, another bare wire. And here we are. So I've got the possibility of doing, of, of, of removing the insulation from these wires either way. And as I said, my preferred method is to burn it off for me because I only do it occasionally. Uh, it leaves the wire a little bit corroded because it is copper. Uh, but what I'm going to do just for purposes of us is to, is to use this method of, of scraping the insulation off the wire. The reason that, that you have to be a little careful in doing this is because if you press too hard that razor, razor, blade, razor blade, it's going to cut right through the wire. <laughs> and then your wire is too short and that's no good because then you have to take it apart and you have to uh, replace the coil and all those nasty things. Which is also, by the way, in, what happens inside actual professional microphones, these little thin wires from the coil. Uh, after enough dropping the mic and other things you're not supposed to do, will uh, will break loose from the coil and the diaphragm, uh, making the microphone turn into sort of a useless blob of metal. Okay, so I've now I've got both wires scraped, and the question is, what do we do? Get this tape out of the way. We do with this thing. This is the wire we cut off from. A set of headphones and you pull back the rubber insulation and you will see there are two different sets of wires inside now since this is a stereo headphone it's going to have two hot and two ground and so I've uh, it's hard to see the colors here but I've wound the two grounds together and I've wound the two hot leads together, so that's going to give me uh, uh, 
plenty of, of connection possibility. I'm not going to mess up by uh, ended up connecting to the wrong place. And likewise, um, these are coded wires on the one side. One, one side, the ground side, the neutral side, is uncoded. You can perhaps see, it's, again, it's a little tricky in the video to see, but uh, uh, the, uh, the neutral wires aren't coded, but the, but the uh, uh, hot wires are coded. Um, and they're, uh, in this case, they're coded with red and blue and enamel to indicate the two sides. So I'm going to do um, the burn method to get rid of the uh, enamel on this headphone wire. There you go. All right, the enamel is gone. And so now I have the possibility of connecting these wires. And since they're, since it's just an experiment for us, we're just gonna wrap the wires together. We're gonna wrap the wire on this side. Doesn't matter which side is which, because this is, as you recall, these are unbalanced cables we're doing here. We're not we're not reversing our phase to have the this go into a balanced cable and all that fancy stuff for oh I didn't get all the insulation off this one. Um, so we're not going to go for the interference rejection because it's going to be marginal if this thing even uh, produces much signal at all. So I'm just wrapping these now insulation-free pairs of wires together like that. And uh, you might like to take a little piece of tape to keep them from touching each other. A plain old piece of cellophane tape in this case. See, we're really super professional here. <laughs> this piece of cellophane tape on the other side. There we go, and it's covered up. So this bizarre looking contraption with a little diaphragm at the top, pushing a coil in this toilet paper tube, all wound together and hooked up to that, will form a microphone. Now the acid test, does it work? Now for that I'm gonna go uh, uh, off, off the, uh, the, the uh, building campus here, the uh, <laughs> place, the assembly room, and I'm going to go up to my usual studio where you find me during class. And I'm going to plug this thing into the usual place where I do my microphone, and I'm going to record it from there. So that's what we got. We'll see if it works. Microphone, microphone, microphone. Uh, that's about all we can say about it. It's connected, it works, here it is, and with any luck, we will have an actual signal coming out the other end. Thank you all very much. Okay, that's all. Bye.